Hello, Booktube. This is Johnny. You know, if I, I just had a bagel with cream cheese, and I don't want to have cream cheese all over my face. Well, it's been at least a couple of days since I made a video. Uh, the house has been cleared out with our visitors, our daughter Bethany and her husband Andy and her three children, Margaret, Louisa, Louisa, Margaret, and Jack have uh, left. They left early Saturday, Saturday morning around five o'clock and they got into Denver late last night. They text my my wife. So they had traveling mercies. Now they're home, get back into their routine. Carol and I will get back into our routine. My routine, getting back into my little habitual routine. I'm a creature of habit. When my routine is broken up, I get kind of fragmented. I don't know where I'm at or where my brain is. Maybe, uh, you know, I was thinking, maybe it's kind of self-centered. I used to think, well, sometimes I think that I'm not ego-centered. I'm not self-centered. That I'm kind of, uh, have been, uh, not selfish that I am I have lost uh, grasping onto my ego that my that I have become partakers of the divine nature and therefore I have been freed from my ego to love people to love God to love my neighbor love my children love my wife that I am just radiating out of my physical body, my the the love of God that I am not grasping after anything that I am. But then you get in contact with people, and I tend to live an isolated life, and maybe I lose true awareness of who I really am. And then you get in contact with three screaming children and just 24 hours of just total chaos and your ego emerges <laughs> maybe you realize that you I kind of live in my own kind of sheltered uh, kind of world but I did throughout those days um, with our company and the kids and the disruption of my routine. I did read. I did go to thrift stores. I did buy, you know, used books. And I did read. I didn't read as much. But I wrote in my diary this morning. And I ended on page 555 this morning in my 2018 diary. Uh, we're halfway through the year. Well, we're on the seventh month. It's only five months left in this year. Next month is August, the month that I was born in 1952. The month that I was spiritually reborn in 1970. So time goes by. I won't go. I will, since my wife goes back to work tomorrow night, I'll make a video maybe tomorrow night showing the books I got at thrift stores, uh, books I got in the mail. But, uh, you know, I was kind of out of it spiritually and I wasn't getting into the Gospel of John. I was reading for a while uh, and I still plan to get back into this. I haven't given up on reading the Gospel of John in the New Testament. So I got this out. I want to get back into it. John interpreted by early Christian and medieval commentators in the church's Bible. Uh, I should say, as I always do, today is Jan not January, is July the 15th, 2018. It is a Sunday late morning. It's 10.01. My wife has faithfully gone off to church. She goes to a 
Presbyterian Church in America, a uh, denominational church which is Calvinistic, conservative, evangelical, uh, goes by the Westminster Standards, it's confessional. Uh, that's the kind of church I would would have been ordained in if I ever if I had ever gone into the gospel ministry was the Presbyterian Church in America. But the Lord had other plans for me. So uh, so yeah, I was still planning to get into the Gospel of John, but to kind of get myself back into some kind of spiritual groove. I showed these books last time in the video, Sunlight Absence, Silence, Awareness, and Contemplation by Martin Lard. I was reading this this morning. and This is his second book. The first one I read by him, this is his first book, Into the Silent Land, A Guide to Christian Practice of Contemplation. So I kind of read these when I, I'm kind of out of it spiritually and get myself into some kind of contemplative state, slow down, get my focus on divine realities. I found out from Amazon that he has a third book coming out in the fall and I pre-ordered it. I also got out, I read a little bit this morning, I bought this last time I was at a Christian bookstore in Grand Rapids, Baker Bookhouse, Rediscovering the Holy Spirit, God's Perfecting Presence in Creation, Redemption in Everyday Life by Michael Horton. I kind of read Michael Horton to give a balance. He's more evangelical, reformed. Uh, Martin Lard is more uh, in the uh, classic Christian tradition of spirituality, which is a whole nother rap I won't go into. But uh, I, I would recommend reading both. Michael Horton and Martin Lard together, along with, <laughs> supremely, the Bible, the Bible above everything else. <laughs> we have to uh, read the Bible every day, go to a Bible preaching church, Bible teaching church, evangelical, conservative, Bible believing, Christ-centered, gospel-centered, God-centered kind of preaching and teaching. And then you, read, then you read these other books, but read the Bible above everything else. And uh, so I've been reading that in the mornings when possible. Uh, this morning my wife went downtown and got Sunday newspapers. Uh, she, she gets the New York Times for me and so we got the New York Times Sunday edition and I always read the book review. I get this in the, you can get this in email, uh, the, the New York Times book review. I get it on Fridays and I usually read it uh, even though if you don't subscribe to the New York Times online, they only allow you five times throughout the month to look at anything in their newspaper. So I don't, I usually just read it, the reviews here. But one thing I, I always like reading in the New York Times book review, they have a little section called, uh, by the book and they 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 interview people and what are you reading what's on your nightstand what books uh you know what you know if you had a dinner party who would you invite as far as writers and this is by i can't pronounce her name but she was the former chief book critic for the times and but she mentioned a book here uh, I was really surprised that she mentioned it because uh, most people, I have never seen it referred to anywhere. Let me see if I can find it now. Oh, where is it? I, I went down and got it when she mentioned it. Oh, I can't, if I can find, I should have underlined it. Um, I 
I don't see it now. <laughs> I don't know why. But, um, but the book she mentioned, I should have underlined it. But I don't see it now. I don't know. I don't know why I don't see it. But it was this book she mentioned, Smiling Through the Apocalypse, Inquirer's History of the 60s as seen by all these people, Norman Mailer, Tom Wolfe, James Baldwin, Saul Billows, William F. Buckley Jr., Gord Vidal, William Burroughs, Timothy Leary, Terry Southern, uh, Gary Wills, um, 26 more it's you know I got this years ago at some used book sale but she mentions this book in this little article I don't know why I can't find it now probably because I'm under pressure to make this video because but she mentioned the book I don't know why I can't see it now because I when she mentioned I said oh wow nobody's mentioned that book and I went downstairs and I got it out of the, the lower level uh, oh, I don't see it. So, uh, maybe I was dreaming it. <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. I don't see it mentioned in this article anymore. So uh, I got that book out. I look at the New York book review. I look at arts and leisure and travel. As far as what I read yesterday, I'm not going to... This is what I... Uh, well, yeah, okay, I forgot to mention. So my wife went downtown, picked up the, some Sunday newspapers, and she picked up a book that I had ordered at the bookstore downtown. And this is the book, Unfabling the East. The Enlightenment's Encounter with Asia by Jordan Oschenhammer, Hamel. Uh, this is translated out of German by uh, Robert Savage, and she got this. I had I had pre I had ordered it. I have his other book, The Transformation of the World: A Global History of the Nineteenth Century, by Jord Jorgen. Oster Hammer Hamel. So these are big clunkers. So I got his new book translated out of German, Unfabling the East, the Enlightenment's Encounter with Asia. So I got that. Now what I read yesterday, and I you know I had been up since four o'clock Saturday morning. I did take a nap. I I got this at the July 4th uh, used book sale, The Assassin's Cloak, an anthology of the world's greatest diaries, diaries, edited by Irene and Irene and Island Taylor. What I've been doing is just reading, like today is July the 15th, and so I'll read that today. I keep this on my, in the living room by my reading chair. I got this book. I volunteered at the library used bookstore Friday. I got uh, some books, and one of the books I found was a book by Alexander Thorax, An Adultery. Uh, I have a couple of his novels in our library, and I started reading this yesterday. Sorry. And then I read yesterday a book I got at the book nook a couple of weeks ago, Cultural and uh, Amnesia, Unnecessary Memories from History and the Arts by Clive James. I read the article yesterday on... Uh, <laughs> Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett, that's who I uh, read about. And also I read on Sergey... Oh, Sergey... Dagahoff, the 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 Agahoff, he was uh, the a Russian uh, kind of 
started the Russian, uh, it was called the, uh, the Baile Rus there in Paris in the early 19th hundreds, 19, uh, early 20th century. I just got a biography of him that I'll show in the next video. So that's what I'm reading. That's what I'm reading in the morning. Like I said, I got, there's a the Friends of the Library used book sale this week. I helped set up Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, I have to open up the used bookstore at the library and then I'll help more at the library used book sale. Also Saturday. And I probably, I was thinking about making a video of showing the books. Somebody wanted a video of, of when I go to a used book sale just showing the books that I would, tables I would go to first of all, things like that. So I might do that. I've been meaning to do that, but every time I go to a used book sale or a used thrift store, I always forget to make a video. Uh, but I might do that this time because I can go early to the used book sale. Nobody will be in the, in the room and I can just film without any kind of being interrupted by anybody or anybody being around. So I might do that. So yeah, so that's what I was going to make a video. Like I said, my wife's at church this morning. It's quiet here. It's 10, 13 at, in the morning on a Sunday here in West Michigan. It's been hot and humid. So we've had the uh, central air system on. It's been kind of dry. This morning I had to go out and water my flower garden and the roses and other plant growth in the backyard. Uh, it's kind of brown, the, the grass. Uh, we don't have a sprinkling system. Some of our neighbors turn the sprinkling system on and you can watch so they can have a, a sparkling, glistening green lawn. <laughs> To me, I like to keep things as natural as possible. I'm not really into having a show, uh, showroom kind of lawn, or I'm not really into, I'm not really a gardener. I mean, I do plant wildflowers, which don't really demand any kind of attention. You know, you pull some weeds, you sprinkle them with water when it's dry. I do have to take, I, I started, a, a wildflower garden to take photos and that's what I do I take pictures of flowers and I post them in my Flickr account and into my online diary Crooked Fingers and Live Journal uh, I like f flowers <laughs> I like birds and sky and clouds and rivers and creeks oceans and wind so yeah so I will sign off and thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for uh, just being out there and hope you're doing well. It's a new week. We're coming to the end of July. Pretty soon we'll be in this autumn season. Life keeps zooming by and I hope you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.